Um, it's important that when we come to church that you get a word from the Lord that, that, that I believe, Avant, that God is going to use me to say something to speak to your life, your situation. And, and when you get your word, you can jot it down, put it in your phone, and put it on your paper, write it with you, and take it with you throughout the week, and you meditate on that. So it's important that when you come, that you get your word. If you're not going to get a word, you might as well don't come. Amen. Amen. You're not coming just to be coming, but there's a word that the Lord wants you to have. I want to I want to read I want to read this text. It's in the Living Bible, verse six through nine of Joshua, chapter one. The Lord speaks to Joshua in verse six, and and he says these words. He says, "Be strong and brave, for you will be a successful leader of my people, and they shall conquer all the land I promised to their ancestors." All you have to do is be strong and courageous and to obey to the letter every law Moses gave you. For if you are careful to obey every one of them, you'll be successful in everything you do. Constantly remind the people about these laws. And you yourself, you got to think about them every day and every night so that you'll be sure to obey all of them for only then will you succeed. Yes, be strong and bold, banish fear and doubt for remember that the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. I want to preach today from these words, God's strategy for success. Help me preach, turn to your neighbor, neighbor. God has a strategy for your success. Come on, you may be seated in the very presence of the Lord. God has a strategy for your success. My brothers and sisters, um, this morning our Samonic spotlight, it shines on God's manservant, Joshua. At a time in his life when he's come to the realization that God desires for him to experience life like he's never experienced it before. At the time of our text this afternoon, Joshua has come to the realization that there were people that started out on the journey with him that are no longer with him. He's come to the realization that he is the one that has been sovereignly selected to lead this generation of Israelites into the land of Canaan. And at the time of the text, please listen, Dave, God has already given Joshua several things. God, number one, has given him his assignment. His assignment in verse number two, if your Bibles are still open, his assignment is to arise and cross over this Jordan and to go into a land that God had prepared for the children of Israel, that God promised to his ancestors. That's his assignment. After God gave him an assignment, in verse 3, God gave him authority. God says in verse 3, that in every place the sole of your foot shall tread upon, I've, I've already given you the land. God has already given him assistance. In verse 5, God speaks to Joshua and tells him, As I was with Moses, I'm going to be with you. I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. At the time of our text, God has already given Joshua an assignment, has given him authority, has given him assistance. And the only thing that's missing in his life is what God gives him in verse number 6, and that is an assurance. God assures Joshua that he will be successful. This is where I want to park and mention parenthetically today that God not only has a desire for you to be successful, God wants to make you successful. I'll say it one more time. God not only has a desire for you to be successful, but you need to know, child of God, that God has a desire to make 
you successful. Touch your neighbor and say he wants to make you successful. But, but not just successful in some areas. God, hear me well, God has a desire for you to be successful in every area of your life. If you're taking notes, write down a couple of scriptures. The first scripture is found in Genesis chapter 39, verse 2. And the second scripture is found in 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse 14. The first scripture in Genesis chapter 39, verse 2. This is what the Bible says about Joseph. The text says that the Lord blessed Joseph there in the home of his master so that everything he did succeeded. And the Lord greatly blessed Joseph in the home of his master. Watch this. So that everything he did succeeded. When you look at the scripture in 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse 14, the Bible says that David continued to succeed in everything he undertook because the Lord was with him. Please don't miss those two verses. Those verses are pivotal. One more time. The Bible says in Genesis 39, verse 2, that Joseph was blessed by God, and in everything he had success. The Bible says about David in 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse 14, that because the Lord was with him in everything he did, watch the text, the Bible says he was successful. Look this way. God has a desire for you to experience not some success, not a lot of success, but God has a desire for you to experience success in everything that you do. Somebody shout in everything. In everything you touch, in everything you try, in everything you do, in everything that you decide, in everything that you want, in everything that you wish for, God has a desire for you to be successful in every, in every area of your life. Y'all ain't feeling me yet, but you don't have to wonder, uh, will you succeed when God is on your side that you're going to succeed? You don't have to wonder if God is on your side that will this work out. You know, based on scripture, that some kind of way that this is going to turn for your good. Have I got any witnesses here that when God is on your side, you don't have to wonder, uh, will my business succeed or will this venture work out or will this relationship thrive or will I bounce back? Because based on scripture, we discover that God has a desire to make you successful in everything. Somebody just shout in everything. However, what the text is telling to teach us this morning is this, that there's a strategy for success, that you cannot have success trying to do it your way. You can't have success trying to follow your plan and your precept. You cannot find success trying to do it uh, your way, through your intellect, with your ability. But God has a strategy for success. This is the desire for God concerning Joshua's life. God speaks to him. And there were several things that Marsha in this text that Joshua had to do um, to appropriate the success that God is assuring him of. The first is in verse number six. The first thing that Joshua had to do, watch this. Joshua had to receive God's promises for his life. Write that down if you're taking notes. The first thing that Joshua had to do, he had to receive God's promises for his life. In verse 6, if you're taking notes, in verse 6, God turns to Joshua. And the first thing that God does is release a prophetic promise in his life. God turns to Joshua in verse 6, and God says to him, You will be a successful leader of my people, and they shall conquer all the land that I promised to their ancestors. Are y'all with me today? The first thing that the Lord does is he turns to Joshua and he says, listen, you will be a successful leader and the people that you're leading, they shall conquer the land that I promised to their ancestors. This, brothers and sisters, was a prophetic promise. It was a prophetic promise because what God does is God looked 
at Joshua's right now and talk to him about his not yet. God sees where Joshua is at present and look beyond where he is now and see how he's going to be in the future. You missed what I just said. You see, one of the reasons why, Lori, I love the Lord so much is because the Lord does not allow the state of my right now to affect the status of my not yet. Is this thing on? God does not allow the state of my right now to affect the status of my not yet. See, see, some people will, watch this, they will never get to your not yet because they can't get over your right now. Some people will never see you for who you are becoming because they're fixated on how you are. Some people will never get to your promise because they can't get beyond your present. There are people right now that will never never get the benefit of seeing what you're going to become because they're judging you based on how you are right now. But that's not what God does. God can look at your right now and see your not yet. I got the wrong crowd. God can see how you are, but he's not judging me based on my present. He's judging me based on my potential. He's not basing me based on how I am now, but he looks at me because he knows what I'm becoming uh, in Christ. Are y'all hearing me? God looks at Joshua's right now and talks to him about his not yet. He says two things, Glimp, uh, in verse 6. God says to him, watch this, he says that the person you are now will succeed and the people you're connected to will uh, subdue. He looks at Joshua in verse 6 and says regardless of your inexperience, regardless of you never being a leader before, regardless of you not having any experience in the current position that you're getting ready to occupy, I want you to know that I did not call you uh, based on your capability. I called you based on your availability. God says, I'm going to bless you to have success even though you've never walked in this area before. And then God says, not only am I going to bless the person you are, I'm going to bless the people you are connected to. God says, Joshua, please Please know that just as you have success, the people you are connected to are going to have success. Just like you are going to succeed, the people with you are going to subdue. You are going to have victory, but guess what? The people with you are going to be victorious. Now, the reason why some of y'all are looking at me like that is because you don't know how to receive this into your life. Because the same prophetic promises that God gave to Joshua are the same prophetic promises that God makes to you and I. God says that the person you are now will have success regardless of who's coming against you, regardless of how many times you failed before, regardless of the mountains you've had to climb or the valleys you've got the tunnel through. God says that you will be successful. Look at your neighbors. Neighbor, you don't know who you're sitting beside. You are sitting beside somebody that God has ordained. I got the wrong crowd. You're sitting beside somebody that God has ordained to have success. Not just in some things, but God has ordained in everything for me to be successful. That's why it's never a surprise when doors open up on my behalf. I never am surprised when things work out on my behalf. I'm never surprised when I come out on top. I'm never surprised when people bless me in a certain way. I'm never surprised when the favor of God shows up on my behalf because God has ordained that success is to be mine. And I wish I was talking to somebody in this house that recognized that God has already looked into your future and your forecast don't call for failure. I don't care how many times you cried before. God says you will succeed. Catch yourself on this chest and declare I am successful. I, I, I got the wrong crowd. You're not receiving. Say, neighbor, I am successful. I know I've had failures. I've had setbacks. But I've discovered that God has given me spiritual elasticity. That the harder you knock me down, the higher I'm going to bounce back. I, I wish I was talking to somebody in this house. God says the person you are. Can I go a little bit further? But not only.
is the person you are guaranteed to be successful. The people you are connected to are going to be conquerors. Okay, um, um, it, it, every parent should have given God praise right there. It, it, every grandparent should have just started shouting, I got the wrong crowd right there. Uh, it, it, everybody that got somebody following behind you should have got excited right there because what the text is teaching us uh, is that God is not just going to bless you, but God is going to bless the people that's connected to you. Verse 6, God tells Joshua, you are going to be successful, uh, but you got some people following you and the people following you are going to be conquerors. Uh, can I give somebody a reason to praise God? Uh, you ought to get excited because what the text is teaching us is that the struggles that you've had before, your child ain't going to have to struggle like you. You don't know when to shout. Somebody ought to give God a crazy praise right there because while your parents may have struggled and your grandparents may have struggled, God says when it comes down to you and the generation behind you, the struggle is going to be over. Can somebody give God crazy praise for the blessing that's on your children's life? Have I got any help in this house? Pastor Jackson, why are you shouting? I'm shouting because I'm connected to a conqueror. I'm shouting because the things that I struggle with, my child won't have to struggle with. I'm shouting because my defeats won't be the defeats of my children. I'm shouting because, check this out, the tendency of myself won't be the traits of those who are coming behind me. I'm shouting because I'm raising a conqueror. Somebody tonight ought to go home and lay hands on your child and speak life into your child. Tell them you will be a conqueror. You will pass these tests. You will graduate from high school. You will go to college. You will graduate from college. You will start your own business. You will raise. Come on, talk to me, somebody. You will succeed. God speaks prophetically. Are y'all still here? Over Joshua's life. And pastor, all he has to do is receive the promises of God over his life. And as easy as that sounds, sometimes it's difficult. Because when you've been broke so long, it's hard to wrap your mind around the fact that God is preparing you for millionaire status. When you've been down for so long, it's hard to even wrap your mind around the fact that God is getting ready to elevate you to new heights. I got the wrong crowd. That you, you, you know, I was talking. I, I was talking to some people, and, and they were explaining to me how most criminals, when they get out of jail, how most of them return back to the system. And they were breaking that thing down for me, Jimmy. They were saying that there's something that's called a, a prisoner being institutionalized. That they be incarcerated so long until that's all they know. That when they become free. That same criminal pattern, that same criminal behavior will follow them because they have been institutionalized. Well, I've discovered that there are people that come to church every week that has never been in prison physically, but you're in prison mentally. You're in prison spiritually. Y'all ain't hearing me. That you are spiritually institutionalized. But the Bible says that whom the Son sets free is free indeed. And what you got to do is you got to see yourself beyond where you are right right now. Can you give somebody a high five and say, neighbor, my not yet look better than my right now? Please don't judge me now on the car I drive and the clothes I live wear and the house I live. Please, please, please don't judge me based on how I look now. My not yet looks better than I feel like preaching. Do me a favor. Tell your neighbor, receive it, receive it. Come on, tell them again, receive it, receive, receive. Y'all ain't feeling me yet. Receive the promises of God over your life. Every promise that has been spoken over your life, receive it. I'm going to keep talking until I get to you. Receive it, receive it. Tell them again, receive it, receive it. Receive, receive it, receive it. Receive that you're the head and not the tail. Receive that you're the lender and not the borrower. Receive that you are above all and not belief. Receive that there's a wonderful worshiper inside of you. Receive that there's an awesome man of God inside of you. 
Receive that there's a business owner in you. Receive that there's a husband in you waiting to come out. Receive that there's a worshiper, a praise. I got their own crowd. Receive that the best is yet to come. Receive that eyes have not seen or ears have heard or heart have entered into the hearts of men. The good things that God has prepared for you. Receive it! The first thing that Joshua has to do he has to receive Troy, the promises of God for his life. That whatever God says, I am what he says. I am. I feel like preaching. I am what God says I am. I'm not defined by what I don't have. I'm not defined by the clothes I wear. I'm not defined by the money in my bank account. I'm not defined by my creature comfort. I am what God says. I am. If I never drive a Mercedes, I can make the miles to look like a Mercedes. If I never wear Jimmy Choo shoes, I can make Payless look like Jimmy. I got the wrong crowd. If I never shop at Macy's, I can make Marshalls fit like me. I got the wrong crowd. I am what God says. First thing that you got to do, you have to receive God's promise. But, 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 but the Lord says something else to Joshua. I'm in verse 8 now. He says, Joshua, not only must you receive God's promises in your life. He says, verse 8, he says, secondly, you, you have to, watch this. He says, remind God's people of the law. Look in verse 8. He, he says, the verse 8, he says, Joshua, put it on the screen. He says, constantly remind the people of God of the laws of Moses. I'm in verse 8. Constantly remind the people about these laws. Are y'all with me today? Uh, in, in verse 8, let me teach in verse 8, uh, um, the Bible talks about the laws of, of Moses. Repeat that shout, the law of Moses. Now, contextually speaking, when the Bible talks about the laws of Moses, uh, he is really referring to the first five books of the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. That, that, that's contextually speaking, the law of Moses. These first five books of the Bible, well, for those who are taking notes, uh, it's called the Torah or the Pentateuch. Are y'all with me today? So contextually speaking, when the Bible talks about the law of Moses, it's referring to the first five books. But uh, um, uh, applicably speaking, meaning for our benefit, uh, when the Bible talks about the law, it's really referring to the word of God. That what God was trying to tell Moses is this. Look this way. God was saying, Moses, that if you want to have success, uh, you cannot separate yourself from the word of God. That if you're going to have success, you got to have the word of God as uh, your foundation. I'm talking to somebody here that you cannot build a life apart from having the foundation as the word of God. What's going to make your business successful uh, is not the business plan, but it's the fact that the business is built on the word of God. What's going to keep your marriage successful? Congratulations, by the way. Uh, it's going to be the fact that you're building your relationship on the word of God. Uh, what's going to keep y'all happy? What's going to keep y'all together? What's going to keep you flourishing? Watch this. Is the word of God. You cannot be successful uh, if the word of God is not central in your life. Touch your neighbor's neighbor. You need the word. And to punctuate, and to punct look this way, and to punctuate the need for the word of God, listen at what the Lord says to Joshua in verse 8. I want to quote it from the, the, the King James Version. In the King James Version of the Bible, it reads something like this. He says, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. He says, but meditate on it day and night. Does your Bible say something like that? It says, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but meditate on it day Day and night. God tells Joshua that two things you got to do with the word. Number one, he says, make sure that the word stays in your mouth and then stays on your mind. That if you're going to have success, number one, the word of God has to stay in your mouth. Nudge your neighbor, tell him, keep it in your mouth. 
Keep the word in your mouth because guess what? There's some stuff that you're going to go up against that's not afraid of your word, but you got to put the word of God on. Have I got any help? You see, the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21, that death and life lieth in the power of your tongue. So that means that there are going to be some times you got to speak some stuff. Come and talk to me, somebody. That what's going to keep you from being discouraged, what's going to keep you from throwing in the towel is you got some stuff in your mouth. Talk to me somebody. Has anybody ever come up against some satanic stuff and before you know it you start quoting some scripture? Because if you're going to have some power, you need the word of God in your mouth. Thank God you got that big family Bible on the coffee table in the living room. Thank God you got that Bible on your dashboard. But when the enemy comes after you, you ain't going to have time to run to the coffee table. You ain't going to have time to run back to the car. You got to be able to have the word of God in your mouth when your tears are streaming down your eyes. You got to talk to your tears and tell them weeping endure for a night but joy comes in the morning. When the enemy shows up at your job tomorrow and you got to tell the enemy no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Come on talk to me somebody. When it seems as if your world is falling apart you got to talk to yourself and tell yourself for lo he's with me always even to the end. You got to have the word in your mouth why so many people don't have the word in their mouth is because you can't have the people of God in your mouth and the word of God in your mouth at the same time. What he said, I said, you can't have the people of God in your mouth and the word of God in your mouth at the same time. You, see, you can't talk about people and have the word in your mouth at the same time. John says, don't let the word leave your mouth. Folk want to know, I feel like preaching, folk want to know how you stay encouraged. It's because I got something in my mouth. People want to know why you hadn't thrown in the towel yet. It's because I got something in my mouth. People want to know why you can roll your shoulders back and stick your chest out and keep your head hung high. It's because I got something in my mouth. People want to know how can you walk around people that despise the ground you walk on waiting for you to fall make a mistake. It's because I got something in my mouth. People want to know how can you bless people that's trying to curse you. It's because I got something in my mouth. Are y'all still here? Verse 8, he says, don't, don't let the book depart your mouth. Verse 8, he says, but meditate on it. I, I, I need the Bible reader. It, it, it says, me, meditate on it. How often? Y'all ain't talking to me. How often? God tells Joshua, here it is. Keep, okay, I think I will. Keep the word in your mouth. But then keep the word on your mind. Tell somebody, keep it on your mind. Can, can, can I tell you why? I'm trying to hurry. Can I tell you why you have to keep the word on your mind? It, it, it's because that, that's where the battlefield is. The, 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 battle, the battlefield is the, 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 the mind. The, 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 the mind. I, 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 I spend a lot of time with my, with my teenage daughter because I'm trying to get in her mind. I, I spend time talking to her. I'm trying to develop her mind. I'm not worrying about a little boy getting her body. I'm worrying about a little boy getting her mind. If, he, if, 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 if I got the wrong crowd, if, he, if, if a little boy get her mind, he'll get her body and my money. <laughs> I got the wrong crowd, I, I, but I, 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 your, 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 your mind, the, the, the devil, the, the devil wants your mind. Can I tell you why the devil wants your mind? The devil wants your mind. Are y'all writing this stuff down? The devil wants your mind because the mind has two primary functions. Can I give them to you? The two primary functions of the mind uh, is a preview and review. <laughs> the two primary functions of the mind, uh, it deals with your memory and your imagination. The devil is trying to stop your memory and your imagination. 
imagination. He's trying to hinder your ability to have preview and your ability to review. Are y'all with me today? Because if you're going to defeat the enemies in your life, you defeat them using your mind, your memory, and your imagination. Let me show you how it all works. In 1 Samuel chapter number 17, y'all remember when David was going up against this big guy named Goliath? He defeated Goliath because of a preview and review. When he shows up on the battlefield, uh, Sister Hester, he shows up on the battlefield, there were people trying to convince David that he didn't have what it took to defeat Goliath. There were people trying to convince him that he was just a child and Goliath was a champion. But what David did, uh, he, hit the pre he hit the review button. David used his memory. David pressed the rewind button of his mind and remembered that this wasn't his first rodeo. He remembered that he defeated the lion. He remembered that he defeated the bear. He remembered that God was with him in the past. And when he showed up on the battlefield, after he hit the review, he hit the preview. He used his imagination. He talked to Goliath and told Goliath that the same God that delivered me then, it would be the God that would deliver me now. He said, I see myself killing you. I see myself cutting up. I got the wrong crowd. I'm talking to somebody right now. The reason why the devil had not defeated you yet is because you still got your mind. Am I talking to somebody in this house that oh God a super califragilistic expialidocious kind of praise because out of all the hell you went through you still got your mind I should have lost my mind but thank God I woke up clothed in my right Turn to your neighbor's neighbor, you too, you too. I should have thrown in the towel. I should have lost my cotton picking mind. But I thank God for imagination. I see myself coming out. Thank God for remembering. I remember how I already came out. And the same God that did it before is the same God that can do it again. Have I got any help in this house? Sit down, let me hurry. Let me hurry. Got 20 minutes before kickoff. Let me hurry. Let me hurry. He, he, said, he said, David, he said, Joshua, you, you, you can be successful. And the only way you can be successful, y'all still here, number one, is that you have to receive God's promises in your life. But not only must you receive God's promises in your life, secondly, you got to remind God's people of the law. Last but not least, I'm in verse 9 now. He said, the last thing you got to do is you have to rely on God's presence in the land. Somebody write that down. Re rely on God's presence in the land. I wish y'all were taking notes. Rely on God's presence in, in the land. The Lord tells Joshua, listen, put the scripture on the screen. He, the Lord tells Joshua, listen, Joshua. He says, you need to remember something. I want you to be bold and strong. You can't operate in fear and doubt. And you got to remember that the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Are y'all still here? He said, you, you say, listen, 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 listen. Wherever you go in the land, you, you got to know that the Lord is on your side. That, that phrase, with you, it means more than just beside you or my company. It, it means that I'm leaning in your direction. Hear me well. When, when, when scripture says, when Lord says, I'm with you, truly, it means more than I'm just here. It, 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 it means that I'm not, I'm not neutral. I'm, I'm partial, that I'm, I'm on your side. <laughs> I got the wrong crowd. I, I know it's been a long time for some of y'all. Y'all look like you've been saved for a minute, but some of y'all used to fight. I know y'all some of y'all used to fight. Only one or two of y'all look like y'all still know how. But, but whenever, when you used to fight, when you're going to the battle, if they said, I'm with you, it, it meant more than I'm just standing here watching you get your behind kicked. Y'all ain't feeling me. It, but, 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 but it meant, come on, bro, because you, you still fight sometimes. It, it looked like, it, it means I'm, I'm, I'm in this thing with you, that you, you're not by yourself, that, that, that if somebody looked like they're going to do something, come on, talk to me, somebody, that, that, 
that, that you ain't by yourself. I, I, I'm already vaselined up. My hair is already in the ponytail. I've already done took off. I got the wrong. I, I already got the comfortable shoes I can kick off. You know what I'm talking about. He, that, that, that I'm with you at, at the moment, at the drop of a dime. And that's the message that God was trying to send to Joshua. God wanted Joshua to know, hear me well as I close, that you need to know that you have my presence and you have to rely on my presence. For those of you who are Bible readers, th this was significantly interesting, significantly important for Joshua to remember because 40 years prior to this point, I'm in Numbers 13 now, Joshua was a part of the delegation of spies that reconnoitered the land. Some of you remember that. And when you go back to Numbers 13, you remember some of you, I see you shaking your head, you remember that there were 10 spies that gave a negative report. Dav, 10 spies, all of them recognized the goodness of the land. All 10 spies received grapes from the land. All 10 spies were rattled by giants in the land because none of them relied on God's presence over the land. I got the wrong crowd. I'll try it again. All 10 spies recognized the goodness of the land. All 10 spies received grapes from the land. All 10 spies were rattled by giants in the land because only two of them relied on God's presence to conquer the land. God tells Joshua this time, don't let that be your testimony. This time as you're making your way into the land, you have to trust me. You have to rely on my presence. My presence will be essential. Touch your neighbor and tell him his presence is essential. Anything that's essential means that you can't do without. Anything that's essential, it means you gotta have. I got the wrong crowd. If you're gonna cook a cake, bake a cake, it's essential that you have some flour. If you're gonna travel cross country, it's a, in the air, it's essential that you have a plane. If you're gonna travel out of space, it's essential that you have a rocket. If you're gonna have life, it's essential that you have a pulse. If you're gonna talk, it's essential that you have vocal cords. If you're gonna look at somebody, it's essential that you have vision. And if you're gonna have success, it's essential that you have Christ. There's no way possible you can have success apart from Jesus Christ. I'm talking to somebody right now. If the truth were told, you could stand up and admit that you've tried to make it without Christ. You've tried businesses. You've tried relationships. You've tried this. You've tried that. But can you give God crazy praise and fess up today that there's no way you can make it without Christ? And because when I look over my life, the times I've made a mess of things, the times I've fallen on my face, the times I've made a collapse of things, those were the times, Johnny, I was trying to make it without Christ. The times my relationships didn't work out. It was times I was trying to do it without Christ. Times when my plans fell through, it was because I was trying to do it without Christ. But oh, I've come to the conclusion that friends may come and friends may go and family may come and family members may go. But the one thing that you gotta have, you gotta have Christ. Lean over and grab your neighbor. Tell them, neighbor, you can't make it without Christ. You can't live without Christ. You can't function without Christ. In him I live. In him I move. In him I have my being. And because I can make it without Christ, I stop trying to. Because I can't live without Christ, I stop trying to. Because I can't be successful without Christ, I stop trying to. So I told the Lord, order my steps in your word. Guide my thoughts with your word. Guide my actions in your word. Teach me what to say. Show me what to do. Show me how to trust. Show me who to trust. Show me what to wear. Show me where to go. Because if you show me, I'm guaranteed to have success. I don't know who I'm talking to, but somebody ought to stand up and give the Lord a crazy praise. What you're praising him for? I'm praising him not because of who I am. I'm praising him not because of what I've done, but I'm praising him because of the success that's in my future. If I'm talking to you, help me shut it down. Turn to your neighbor for the last time. Take them by the hand and tell them,
a neighbor you're looking at a success in the making you got the wrong neighbor find somebody else and tell a neighbor you're looking at somebody with success in everything in everything that I try in everything that I touch, in everything that I do, in everything that I try, I will be successful. In the doors that were closed, they shall open. In the places I were denied, I shall be approved. In the things that didn't work out, I believe by faith they will come to pass. If you believe it, don't wait until it happen. But praise him like you lost your mind. Why you shouting? Why you running? Why you leaping? Why you jumping? It's because God told me I got an assurance of success. And because I got success in my future. When you see me looking down, look quick. If you see me depressed. Look quick if you see me crying. Look quick if you see me on the ground. Look quick because I declare I'm bouncing back. Give your neighbor high five and tell a neighbor no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Ain't it all right? Ain't it all right? Yeah! Yeah! Ah, yes! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Tell three people, receive it, receive it. Come on, tell them, receive it. Come on, tell them, receive it. Come on, tell them, receive it. Give them half, I say, receive it. Come on, go to your neighbor, receive it. Receive it, receive it, receive that you're coming out. Receive that you're being healed. Receive, yes. Hallelujah. Thank you. Success. You will be successful. Do me a favor. Speak life to somebody beside you. Tell them, neighbor, you will be successful. Tell them it's going to work out. Come on, speak life. Come on, speak life. Come on. You're not doing it. Speak life. Speak life. Come on, go to my brother here. Speak life to him. Speak life. Come on, glory. Come on, walk around. Speak life. Come on, speak life. Come on, go to somebody, speak life. Come on, speak life, speak life. Come on, speak life, come on, come on. I commission you, come on. I deputize you. Come on, come on, come on, go, 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 go. Come on, pastor, help me. Go around, speak life, speak life, speak life. Come on, you will say, I see success. I see success, 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 success. Come on, come on, come on, success, success. Come on, success, success. I got the wrong crowd, success, success. Come on, success. Come on, even in the choir. Come on, success. Come on, I got the wrong crowd. Come on, help me. Come on, speak life. Come on, that's tough. Y'all ain't do it. I'll do it. Success. Success, success. Success, success, success. Success, success. Success, success. Success, success. Success, success. I got the wrong crowd. Success, success. Success, success. Success, success, success. Success, hallelujah. Success, hallelujah. You will prosper. You will succeed. You'll be blessed, 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 blessed. Hallelujah. 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 Somebody shout success. Success over our church. Success over your family. Success over your business. 
Success over your children. Success over your match. Success. Oh, yeah. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on in this house. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Success. Success. Don't be scared of success. Come on, don't be scared of success. It got your name on it. Don't be scared of success. It's calling you. Don't be scared of success. Walk in it. Don't be scared of success. Driving it. Come on, I got the wrong crowd. Don't be scared of success. You can handle it. You can handle it. Hallelujah. God can't bless everybody with success. Because some people get it and they forget God. God can't bless everybody with success. Some people get it and forget where they came from. God can't bless everybody with success. Some people get it and get arrogant and get narcissistic and egotistical. God can't bless everybody with success. Some people get it and stop speaking to people, stop going to church. Get a new car, drive it every place except church. But I told God, you can trust us with success. You can trust us with success. Because I promise we will honor you. I promise we will worship you. I promise that when you allow us to build our building, that we'll give you glory. We'll give you credit. That the pastors won't take credit and, and the leaders won't take credit. But we'll give you glory. We'll give you honor. You can trust us with success. We won't get the big head. We'll stay humble. We'll stay the same. I got the wrong crop. You can trust us with success. We'll still be approachable. We'll still speak to people. We'll still declare that we're nothing apart from Jesus Christ. And I'm talking to somebody right now. You want to tell God, God, make me successful. Let my marriage be successful. Let our children be successful. Let my home be successful. Let me be successful on my job. You can trust me that if you raise me up to be over the whole department, I'll still give you glory and honor. If you trust me to be the chief of the department one day, I'll still come to church and give you glory. If you trust me to have my own business, I'll still come to church and give you glory. If you trust me to be blessed, I'll still get my tithe, my offering. If you bless me to be a news anchor, I'll still give you glory. I declare that God, he wants to make you successful. I want you to know when I'm done, there's stories we hear every day. That's not going to be your testimony. God is going to make you defeat the odds. There's an assault on marriage, but that won't be your case. God will make you success. Children are getting killed. That's not going to happen to you. God's going to make you success. Businesses are closing up, but that's not going to happen to you. God is going to bless you to be successful. People are losing their jobs and Homes are being foreclosed on. But it's not going to happen to you. Because God, bro, can make you successful. But you got to receive the promises that whatever promise that God has spoke over your life, I receive it. When I was a little boy, my mother was when I was a little boy. People spoke stuff over my life. When I was just a little boy, coming up praying, and I remember praying and now this boy going to do this and this boy going to do that. And I tried to run from it. But you can't run from the prophetic promise that's over your life. So I want you to stop running from it and receive that this is what God called me to do. And I'm not going to let anybody stop me or deny me. 
And today, I want to give an invitation to somebody, I'm done, under the sound of my voice. You need Christ in your life. 